In today's show, we're going to talk about the Power App Set Focus function and how to use it to scroll to the top of your forms after you submit it. So this is a common question that like really trips people up and basically there's a bunch of people on the internet that said it's not possible. So of course I had to figure out how to do it. So I thought I'd show you guys how. So first, here's our intro. Hi, my name is Shane Young with Power Apps 911. Those guys. And today we're going to talk about the Power App Set Focus function. And we're gonna put it into place. Now we're gonna go over how to use the function, but I'm gonna show you how to get to the back of the top of those forms, how to reset those forms at the top using this little trick that I figured out. And it's probably not the first person figured out, but whatever. So let's just switch over to my desktop and dive in. Over here on the desk, I have kind of set up a couple of things, right? This is just a standard gallery connected to my SharePoint list, could be any data source. And then I just made a form, but what I wanted to do with this form was just make a form that scrolls really, really far, right? Because these are the ones that drive everyone crazy because after we make a change, right? If we change Nicola's thing to purple here and then we scroll to the bottom, you know, when we're done and we hit submit form, it's great, yay. It brings us back <laughs> because it changed the data and then everything got refreshed. But what happens a lot of times to people is they're working in these forms and they are just scrolling through them, right? Like they're like, yeah, I kind of did this. Maybe I didn't edit any data or I didn't change it. I just want a way to put, send my users back to the top of that. So to get to the top, what you can do is you can use the set focus function. But before I show you how to do it, I should probably show you how the function works, right? So if you do a text input, let's throw it on screen here. Sometimes you want your users, you know, you want to put the cursor there, right? Like, so think of like, you know, they broke something and so they have an error message. You want to send the cursor there. Or when the screen first loads, you want to get them to the specific place, right? You want the cursor blinking at them. What you can do is use the function called set focus that I can never remember the name of. I had to look up the name before I started recording today. But you can say, hey, set focus to text input one. And so if I press this button, see that? It put my cursor over there. I could have my cursor over here, down here, it doesn't matter. When I press this button, it automatically puts their cursor into this drop or into this uh, control. Now, keep in mind, set focus only works with certain controls, right? Like you can't set focus into an image or something like that. You know, there are a finite set of those, uh, but you can do, jump into like drop downs, I think. Let's try drop down, I don't remember now. Insert a drop down. There we go, we'll pull this over here. So can I set focus on that dropdown? I don't know. All right, who's the expert here? Probably not me. We'll do that, Drop down one. Yeah, see, it yells at you, right? This is a very common error. A specified control cannot be focused. It may be on another screen, right? So you can't set focus to other screens, good to know, or inside a form gallery component. And so see the documentation, right? So you're like, well, that's really annoying, Shane. You just told me you're gonna use it inside of a form. Well, sometimes the, error messages kind of lie to you. So let's fix this one for the moment. So set focus, text input one. And so then let's just make sure it still works. Boom, it works. Okay, we'll get rid of that drop down. We know it doesn't work. So what would happen though, you know, if we go back over here, and so if I want to get you back to the top of this form, I would need to know that this uh, particular control, and if we look down here, you can see it is data card value one. This is a common mistake people have made when I've showed them this before, is they get confused and they try to set it to the wrong location. So I wanna set it to the actual text input data card value one. So if you go back up here, you can type in data card value one. Oh look, it doesn't get angry. And so what's really cool about this is remember like when we're way down here in the middle of our form, if you're like, oh, well, I wanna get back to the top. Joop, it takes you straight up there. So this is something that people have been trying to do forever and ever and ever. I don't even like know the exact scenario where they're trying to do it. I just know that people ask, and they've been told no. So I said, yeah, you can. Now, one of the things that came up immediately though after showing someone this, like, well, I don't have a text input at the top. It's not my first control. Ugh. Okay, so let's, let's rearrange real quick and make it so it's not our first control, right? So what can we do with the form? We just go over here to edit fields and we'll drag the, um, department was the choice column up to the top. Okay, so then now if I did it, it would set it to the second one, but that's not what you wanted. You wanted literally the top. So what I came up with for that person was we went, you know, there's two different ways to do it. I guess we'll do it the least confusing way. So what we could do here is we went to this department one, and I said, all right, I wanna edit this card. So I unlocked it, so advanced, 
unlocked. And, oh, department is, I'm cheating. Hang on. Hang on. I picked the wrong one. It's favorite colors, the one I meant to pick. Oh, who makes this stuff up? Properties, right? Because the edit or department's already a drop down, or it's not a drop down, so that's kind of cheating. I meant to do favorite color. There we go. Okay. So that's one we can't select until Let's, we can double check and try, right? So what is this? This is data card value four. So data card value four, right? It yells at me and it gives you this error message, you know, and you're like, oh yeah, well you can't use it, right? No, not the case. So what I do is I go unlock this card, doop, and then I put a text input into this card, right? So, and then I just say, hey, you know what? I want your... Um, I think I just made it invisible, quite frankly. Let's see if it's that, that works. So what is that? It's called text input two. So change this to text input two. Okay. So then now if we do that, if we scroll to the bottom, all right, it doesn't work because it is invisible. All right. So that doesn't work. Boo. It's all right. Where is it? Text input two. So we're going to make it visible. So that tells you you can't select into a non-visible control. So then last but not least, what we did with it was we just said, hey, what if we make it really, really tiny? Zero by zero. See if that works. Scroll to the bottom, hit the button. Voila! So that is my trick for getting people back to the top. Um, you know, you can kind of see that it's selected up here so you could set the border colors and all that. You'd set all those to um, white or transparent so that way they wouldn't show up. But now the user gets pulled to the back of the top of the form, even though you might not have any text inputs on the form or you don't definitely don't have them at the top. So there you go. That is my fun little trick. Set focus is a great one for those of you that are trying to automate things. You want to reduce keystrokes. You want to automatically send the user to certain fields. It works great for that. And thanks to that handy dandy little trick and ignoring the warning message that Power Apps gave us, we were able to use it to scroll to the top of a form. Fun? Fun. Cool. That's it for today. Have any questions, any comments, any things you want to see me cover like this, little tidbits, little tricks, little functions you want to dive into, leave them below. As always, if we can do anything to help you, reach out at powerapps911.com, right? We have consulting, training, projects, mentoring, you name it, we do it. And for goodness sakes, if you haven't subscribed yet, hit the subscribe button. Cool. All right. With that, I'm going to say thanks and have a great day. Before you go, be sure to click on the subscribe button over here so that way you'll be notified when new videos come out. If you need any help or you want to work together, whether your problem is big or small, check us out at Power Apps 911. We do it all. I rhymed. Or if you're looking for more formal training offerings, we have those linked up here somewhere. So, Check them out. Thanks and have a great day.